When we talked about quantitative studies, we talked about reliability and validity and all of those kind of concepts. Well, now we've switched gears. We're talking about qualitative research. And qualitative researchers don't usually use terms like reliability and validity. We use a word called trustworthiness. So that is the word that we are going to use in this class to describe how believable a, a, the results of a qualitative study are. So this word trustworthiness kind of comes from these um, two leaders in qualitative research um, development, Lincoln and Guba. And their trustworthiness framework kind of describes trustworthiness as how much truth value do we place in this data and how it was interpreted and uh, analyzed. Um, there's really five criteria in the Lincoln and Guba framework, as you see here on the slide. Four of the five of those kind of have a mirror image in quantitative research. Um, so we're going to talk about each one of these individually, and I'll kind of explain each one and how they kind of relate to quantitative as well. So first of all is credibility. And I put in blue at the bottom because it's important that credibility is really most people believe the most important criteria for talking about the trustworthiness of qualitative studies. If you don't have credibility, then you don't really have a good study because credibility refers to how confident are we that this data is really uh, and how it was interpreted was truthful. Um, so this is kind of like the same as internal validity with um, quantitative studies, okay? So basically with credibility, as I'm reading a study, I need to, that the, re, the researchers needed to have given me enough information in that study, in that article of the study, to help me believe that what they say is true, okay? So it's kind of hard because we can only use what the researchers give us, so we have to read carefully. We have to look for certain things in studies, which we'll talk about in a later presentation, so that we can see whether this was indeed a credible study or not. Okay, for dependability, that has to do with the stability of data over time. And, and this is somewhat similar to reliability or consistency. Um, so with this, that means that the researcher shouldn't just read the qualitative manuscripts from their, um, the transcripts from their interviews once and be done with it. You really need to read and reread and often reread multiple times all of these pages of transcripts so that you truly understand what the data says and that it's not your interpretation of it shouldn't be changing over time. And a lot of times, well, every time, frankly, qualitative researchers should not just have one person doing the analysis and that's it. So if I read through 500 pages of manuscripts from um, interviews from my participants and I'm the only one who's doing it, then I, by myself, am deciding what's important and what's not. That's not good. We really need more than one person so that this is not biased and not based on my own ideas about my topic. Okay, so that what I was just describing refers to confirmability. That means two or more people need to make sure that the data is accurate, that the data's meanings are accurate based on how we've interpreted them from the, what the participant said. So this has to do with objectivity kind of and quantitative research. So you should somewhere in your articles that you read that are qualitative, see where they've talked about two or more researchers going through the data, collect, the data analysis process. Okay, for transferability, this is very similar to generalizability in quantitative research. I don't, we don't use the same words though. A lot of times we keep things very separate. So quantitative has generalizability, qualitative has transferability, but they mean the basic, basically the same thing. To which people, which other groups or settings could I transfer the findings to? Okay, because if there, if it's just a study of 12 people who have decided to adopt, and I'm interested in that process in my own location here in Louisiana, and this study was done in South Korea, then is it necessarily transferable? It might be, but we need to be very careful. 
In order to determine whether something is transferable, it has to have a thick description. That means the research report, the article, has to give me enough details about the people who were in the study and the setting in which the study took place. And I can use that to make a judgment call as to whether I feel that I can transfer the study's findings to my own workplace and my own patient population. The fifth and final part of Lincoln and Guba's trustworthiness framework is authenticity. And this really does not have a match in quantitative research. Basically, how well did the researchers actually convey the feelings and the tones and the emotions of the participants as they stated them in their interview? And really the way that they do this is by providing raw quotes. So actual words that the participants said during their interviews, they're going to include excerpts of those in their articles. And by doing that, that lends to the authenticity. Not only am I trusting that the researchers interpreted things correctly, but I can actually see snippets of what people said and how they kind of assigned that under this theme. So here's a theme, that's a finding, and then here's a quote that participants said that matched to that theme, okay? And then here's theme number two, and here's some quotes, and theme three, etc. That lends to the authenticity and also to the credibility of the study that all of this data is making the study more trustworthy. They're providing me clues within their article that show me that they did everything that they possibly could to make their outcomes more believable and more accurate.